When I use the word spirit in this video, I'm not talking about a force or the spiritual realm. Rather, I'm talking about the spirit in the sense of an attitude, a characteristic, or the immaterial parts of a person. So with that in mind, we can say that people can actually be expressing the opposite spirit of their assigned gender. So men can be expressing a feminine spirit and women can be expressing a more masculine spirit. But as Christians, we know that God wants us to be expressing the spirit that corresponds with the gender that he's assigned to us. So to help us accomplish that goal, in this video, we're gonna talk about four differences between the masculine spirit and the feminine spirit according to scripture. And please note that when I'm giving these categories in the four points ahead, I'm not talking about rigid rules that never overlap. There's going to be some instances where men and women do both of the things I'm gonna be talking about in these points. My main point for this video and these points is that men should be mostly expressing these masculine traits and women should be mostly expressing these feminine traits. Number one, the masculine spirit is marked by initiation and the feminine spirit is marked by invitation. According to Ephesians 5, 21 through 33, we know that only a man can be a husband and only a woman can be a wife. And to take it a step further, God designed the husband to be a representative of Christ and the wife to be a representative of the church. And marriage is supposed to represent the love relationship between Christ and his church. Now, when you think about the relationship between Christ and his church, who is the initiator? Christ. But God's people are supposed to be responding to his initiation and inviting him to initiate more. We love because he first loved us. Thus, if men are supposed to be representing Christ in the relationship, it is biblically consistent to say that men should be the primary initiators, but we can't forget that the church isn't supposed to just sit there passively and doing nothing while Christ does all the pursuing. The church is supposed to be inviting Christ's pursuit and responding to his pursuit. Thus, to be biblically consistent, a woman should be inviting and responding to the man's initiation. Another way you can see this principle is when it comes to physical attraction between a husband and wife. Typically, the woman's body is attracting the man's body her femininity arouses the man's masculinity. But the man is pursuing and initiating, but he's being invited to through the beauty that his wife is using to arouse his masculine strength. Number two, the masculine spirit is marked by providing and the feminine spirit is marked by preparing. I'm not saying it's a sin for a woman to have a career or to provide income for the family. What I'm talking about is in the context of the love relationship between a husband and wife, and then more generally between men and women, it's true that the masculine role is to be the hunter, so to speak, and then the feminine role is to take what the man provides and then to manage those resources and per and prepare what the man has brought to her. So the man goes out and hunts and the wife prepares and manages the resources that he brings in. Now, before you go and run to the comment section crying about how these are just, you know, old school gender stereotypical roles, let's clarify what I'm saying and not saying. I'm not saying that it's a, a woman can't be feminine if she has a career. And I'm not saying a man can't be masculine if he likes to cook. I'm not saying a woman isn't a Christian woman if she doesn't fit neatly into the apron wearing 1950s model of a woman. And I'm not saying that a man is less of a man if his wife makes more money than him. Again, remember what I'm talking about when I'm referring to the spirit. I'm not talking necessarily about actions and specific things that people are doing. Again, I'm talking about the attitude and characteristics of a person 
particularly in how they relate to each other in a relationship. Men and women are biblically free to break down the practical chores of life in the ways that they feel best suit them as individuals. Now, oftentimes there is a common breakdown that generally occurs for men and generally occurs for women based upon the way that God has designed men and women and the way that he's gifted them. You can even see this in a very practical way between a husband and wife when it comes down to the typical way in which they break down the chores. Most of the time, the man is more eager and willing to take care of the chores that surround the house and are outside the four walls of the home. So if someone's gonna mow the lawn, it's typically the man. The landscaping, typically the man. External things that need to replace siding or the roof, typically the man is going to be doing those things while the woman is more eager and willing to take care of whatever's happening inside the home, all those chores. And again, this isn't a rule. I'm not saying you're doing something unbiblical if the wife likes to mow the lawn and the man likes to do the dishes. Um, that's not wrong. I'm just saying that generally speaking, if we're all being honest, you can see this principle at play in the ways that people generally break down the chores. The man is the one who goes outside the home takes what's needed, provides, hunts, and then the woman is the one managing the home, basically making a house a home. So big picture, if a man's hobbies or his activities at home are interfering with his ability to provide, that man needs to readjust his priorities in life and be willing to express a more masculine spirit to take care of his primary responsibility as provider. And likewise, if a woman's career or interests or hobbies outside the home are interfering with her ability to take care of the children and manage the life of the house, then she needs to reprioritize her life because she's not expressing the feminine spirit that God's called her to express. It's a team effort. The husband and wife are supposed to be doing these things together. So again, there's going to be some overlap. But when God looks and says, the family is not being provided for and there's something that could be done, that responsibility lands on the man. And if something's going on inside the home where, you know, the children are being provided for, like, emotionally, or there's some sort of uh, lack in the caretaking of the household, God's going to look at the woman and say, you're not prioritizing your family if there's something she could do to increase the health of her home. Again, there is overlap. I'm not saying that it's not connected, but there are these clear distinctions as you read. For example, in Ephesians 5:25. It says that the man is supposed to act like Christ and provide and nourish for the wife. And then the wife is to submit to the husband. And so as the church submits to Christ and manages the gifts that he provides, so too must the woman be managing the provisions the man is providing. Number three, the masculine spirit is marked by protection and the feminine spirit is marked by respectfulness. To be protected by someone, you have to be willing to submit to their authority to protect you. A woman is 100% biblically free to not follow the protection that her husband or in this sense, generally speaking, that the man is seeking to provide. I'm not saying she should do that or it's the right thing to do that, but notice this phrase, wives submit to your husband, as seen in Ephesians 5. It's, it's directed towards the wives. It doesn't say husbands make your wives submit. Thus, we can conclude that this is a command directed towards the wives, meaning that it is their choice to either disobey or obey this command in the scriptures. Just like it doesn't say, wives, make sure your husbands sacrifice their lives for you. Rather, it says, husbands, treat your wives like Christ did the church and lay down his life for the church. So, it's her choice to submit to the sacrifice that her husband is providing. But if she chooses not 
to submit to his protection, then she's walking outside of his protection and doesn't get the benefits of his sacrifice for her. So again, the Bible doesn't tell husbands to enslave their wives. It actually tells the husbands to lay down their lives for their wives in sacrifice. It does tell the wives though to respond to that sacrifice with respectfulness. So the masculine spirit offers protection and the feminine spirit accepts that protection. And number four, the masculine spirit is marked by giving and the feminine spirit is marked by gratitude. I believe there's a general difference in the way that God designed men and women to find happiness in the relationship with each other. Big context, of course, our ultimate happiness as Christians must be only accomplished through Christ. I'm talking about the lower level happiness in a relationship. And what I've seen in in practical observation and in scripture is that women find happiness in a relationship when they find a man who can make them happy. And men, however, find happiness when they can find a woman that they can make happy. So a woman wants a man who can make her happy and a man wants a woman that he can make happy. And one way to see this in a practical way is when it comes to special occasions in the relationship. So for example, you're not going to find a man who after the special day, whatever that is, an anniversary or a holiday or a birthday or something, you're not going to find a man who goes out and complains to his friends, she didn't buy me the right gift. She didn't take me to the right restaurant. She didn't say the right words that I needed to hear. She didn't prioritize me in this special way. But as we all know, you will hear a woman complaining to her girlfriends if a man doesn't properly do those things. And vice versa, what you will find a man complaining about to his guy friends is if he goes out of his way to do all these things and the woman's not grateful for it. If he feels like it wasn't received well, I went out through all my effort, I bought this gift, I did this, I thought that's what she wanted and she wasn't happy. That's what the man's gonna be complaining about. And so that's an example of this principle that women want a man who's going to make them happy and men want a woman who is they're able to make happy. And it's that principle of giving and gratitude. Or to say it again, initiator versus inviter. Or pursuer versus responder. I believe this is why Paul concluded the, the famous passage in Ephesians 5 the way that he did in verse 33. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Shouldn't the woman love the man and the man respect the woman too? Yes, but the primary essence of the masculine is to initiate love and the primary essence of the feminine is to respond to that love with gratitude, i.e. respect. Here's a four part series where I go through the book of Ruth chapter by chapter and apply the principles there to more differences about men and women in relationships. So if you wanna keep learning with me, feel free to watch this playlist, this four part series. I'm Mark from applygodsword.com. Hope this was beneficial to you. Until next time, God bless.